Hi, and welcome to this section of the Physics Tutor. And in this section, we're going to continue talking about the potential due to you know, various objects. And in this section, we're going to specifically start talking about the potential due to a point charge. Now remember, we're starting to come back a little bit full circle because at the very beginning of the course, the very first thing we talked about was the electric field of a point charge or the force. And everything ended up starting out as that basic, basic uh, idea of what happens as a result of a point charge. The reason usually the books start talking about point charges first is that if you know how a point charge behaves, then you can represent any object you want right, as a collection of point charges. And so you can use integration to calculate the electric field or whatever it is you're trying to do with more complicated shapes. So now that we've studied the electric field in a pretty good detail, and in the last couple of sections we talked about the potential uh, you know, that relates to a field, so the electric potential, right? In the last couple of sections, we talked about the potential kind of in theoretical terms. We talked about how it relates to the electric field, that the electric field is a derivative of the potential in whatever direction you're looking. We talked about that. We worked some general problems that dealt with it. Now we're going to come full circle and start talking about the uh, electric potential of a point charge, just like we did in the very beginning of the course. So we're kind of coming a little bit full circle, starting with that basic idea of a point charge. And we're going to learn about that, and then we'll go on in the next section into a little bit more complicated uh, things. But don't lose sight of what we're talking about. When you know that an electric field exists anytime you have charged particles, electrons or protons or ions or whatever, any kind of net charge, you're always going to have an electric field. And complementary to that, you can always envision this potential that's enveloping the same space. The derivative of that potential is equal to, uh, you know, with a negative sign in there, the electric field in whatever direction you're looking. So the potential goes hand in hand with the electric field. So without proof at all, here is the potential due to a point charge. That potential, the potential due to a point charge. All right? And again, I'm not going to prove it to you because, uh, you know, if you really think back, we didn't prove the Coulomb force law either. We just said this is measured in the laboratory. So the, um, the potential due to a point charge is going to look very familiar, uh, very similar, I should say, to some other things you've seen. The uh, potential is equal to 1 over 4 pi times epsilon, which is the permittivity of, of free space, times whatever charge it is you're looking at in coulombs, could be positive, could be negative, divided by R. So this is the potential. If you put into this guy, you know, 4 pi, those are constants, you know what this constant is. This is a number in coulombs, this is a number in meters, in, in meters away from your point charge, right? Then when you put all of this in there and you hit the enter button, you're going to get a number back, and that number is the number in volts. How many volts of potential do you have this distance away from a point charge? So if you can imagine a point charge here, then this guy is going to be, give you different values of, of electric potential in volts out there. So you're going to have this sort of scalar field that's going to tell you, like that topographic map did in the last couple of sections, what the potential is uh, various distance away from the uh, away from the origin, which is where your point charge is actually located. Now, I'm not going to prove it to you, but notice it does look very similar to what the electric field uh, of a point charge is. And those of you that have uh, maybe memorized that by working on the problems will, will know that the only difference really between this and the electric field of a point charge is that instead of the R here, when you're talking about the electric field, it's R squared. Now, let's do a little, you know, I'm putting my fingers up, proof to show you that this is indeed correct. So if that is correct, if, it, if this is really the potential due to a point charge, then you should be able to satisfy the following deal. The electric field, in whatever direction you look, because we, we talked about this in, in the last section, is equal to the negative of the partial derivative uh, in that direction, okay, uh, of the potential. So basically if you take the derivative of the potential in whatever direction you're looking, x, y, z, r, it doesn't matter, whatever variable you happen to be looking in, if you take that partial slap a negative in front, that should give you the, uh, <clears throat> the electric field strength. So let's do that. For our problem, since we're always talking about 
since these are spherically symmetric problems, you always talk about, you really, your variables almost always are, since it's a nice radius away from your central point. Then that would be uh, the derivative of the potential with respect to r, the partial derivative of the potential with respect to r. So if you do that, what you're going to have is the derivative with respect to r. And then inside here, let's just go ahead and put what we, what we claim to be the potential, 4 pi times uh, the permittivity times q over r. So if we do this derivative, we should get the right answer. And those of you that are, have done calculus for a while, you, know, you can probably already see that it's true. This is a constant. All this stuff in here is a constant. Uh, so I can pull it out. And in fact, if you think about it, since this, is a, this charge q here uh, is just a number, right? So if you have a one coulomb charge, that would be the number you'd put in there. So for a given charge, calculating a given um, potential out there, the charge is a, is a constant, really, for whatever charge you're calculating it for. So really, this is a constant, this is a constant.